So you have been exploring now with calculating uh, experimental error. And you took your data that you got, your, I wanted you to take your, your average density calculation. I wanted you to take, I wanted you to take this number, well this was for a different fluid. You were actually measuring the fluid of alcohol. You knew what that fluid was. And um, so for your density of alcohol, average density calculation, we're going to calculate our experimental error. Experimental error means that you're comparing what you did in, what you did in the laboratory to what the known value was. When I say laboratory, what you did in the classroom, right? What you did in the hands-on activity or whatever, what you did with the, with the cylinder and scale, how does that compare with what uh, a scientist would do in a lab you know, with much more expensive equipment? Did we even come close? And so uh, let's go with, well, let's go, you know, Tyler, I'm going to pick on you because Tyler showed me his answer and it was like 99% error. It's like, dude, that's, that's like huge error. You did something wrong. And it is, some, it is easy to do something wrong. First of all, let's look at the symbology here, the math symbols. Um, these are just brackets. There's not really a difference between these big square brackets and these uh, curved brackets here. But these two right here are not brackets. I need to point that out. You know what symbol that is in math? Two straight lines going up, absolute value. And all that means is negative numbers are not allowed. If you do the calculation and you get a negative value, you'll probably go, oh, I'm supposed to take the absolute value of the numerator. And that's only going to happen if your, what, your theoretical value is larger than your experimental value. That'll cause this numerator to be negative. And all I'm saying by putting these absolute value brackets right here, it doesn't make any sense to have a negative number. Don't report a negative number. All right, so those symbols just mean I want you to do what I just said in words. No negative numbers, okay? Uh, your experimental value is the one that you determined. Your theoretical value is the one that Siri will tell you or you'll look up in a textbook or something like that. Um, the way you remember this equation, and quite often I ask my students to memorize this because it's important, the way you remember it, it, experimental minus theoretical over theoretical, you use theoretical twice because it's the most important. Right? So experimental minus theoretical over theoretical. Right? So you use theoretical twice in this equation because it's the most important. What you'll do is when you do this, you get a decimal and then you multiply it times 100 so that you can get a percentage. So that's basically all we're doing with, with the math there. So. Um, Tyler, what did you get? What did you and your lab group get for an experimental value for the density of alcohol? What number did you put in right there? Point eight one, and that's great. With that's limited sig figs, you've done everything I've told you to so far, and I've erased it. But what did Siri tell us the accepted value for the density of alcohol is? Point seven eight nine. Okay, and then we're going to divide it by 0 0.789, 0 0.789, 0 0.789, okay. And I don't know, let's just write this out. What did you get? Oh, you fell, all right, so let's talk about the trap that you fell into. You, so, and I, you said, what's the problem? I said, if I said order of operations, would that, would that give you any hints? And then the whole table groaned, oh, right. So you have to be careful. I don't know what you did, Tyler. Did you, did you do 0.81 minus? He, he put it in the and then it took the division. You did, you did 0.81 minus, uh, minus 0.789 divided by 0.789, right? And so order of operations said that it would do this first, and then it would subtract, it would subtract that from this. So that's why the parentheses are on top. And your math teacher will tell you, do what's, inside do what's inside the innermost parentheses first, and then work outward, right? So you're supposed to do essentially the numerator before you divide it by the denominator, by the denominator, OK? This is so cool because you guys are like, you come into this class, and it's like, OK, this is why I'm doing it in math, right? See, science is cool, right? Okay. Um, so if you do this math, what did you get? What was the right answer that you got, Tyler? Uh, the right answer that I got the second time was 2.6. 2.6. 2.6. 2.6. 2.6. 2.6. 2.6. 2.6. 2.6. 2.6. 2.6. 2.6. 2.6. 2.6. 2.6. 2.6. 2.6. 2.6. 2.6. 2.6
2.66, but oh, 6, 6, we need to limit the sig figs here, right? Yeah, it, it would go up to 2.7 with sig figs. And put the percent right there because we're calling it a percent. This is really, really good, Tyler. In fact, I request of my seniors that they, they should be able to get 5% or, or less in a high school lab. They should be able to get 5% or less in a high school lab. You guys, I'm gonna, you should be able to get 10% or less just because you're not experienced working in the lab. But anything under 10% or under 5% is really pretty good. So you can raise your elbow up high, pat yourself on the back. Anybody, what other kind of values did we get? Anybody else get less than 5%? Who got less than 10%? And you, you, you under 5%ers can raise your hands too. Who got under 10%? Okay. Anybody get 10% or more? Error. Okay. Probably the rest of you just haven't done the calculation yet. All right. Okay. This is really good. Okay. We'll let Campbell back in. <laughs>